And we're at Indo-Pacific Sea Farms today, and the question we're asking is why do giant clams of the family Tridacnidae die in aquariums? And uh, the answer is that much of the mortality that occurs in captivity in aquariums and even in mariculture farms relates to the morphology of the shell and to the living habit of the individual clam. We start with Tridacna crocea, which is one of the blue clams, the blue ones being Maxima and crocea, both of which live tightly attached to rocks. Maxima burrows about halfway into the rock and crocea burrows all the way in so that all you can really see is the really brilliantly blue mantle. But it is held to the rock, to the coral, by the bissel threads which emerge from the ventral part of the shell valves and this hole is called the bissel gape. Now the stronger the clam attaches, the larger the bissel gape is. So this is a crocea, strongly attached, strongly burrowed, huge bissel gape. When that is cut to harvest the clam, it leaves this big hole. So you may receive this from a pet shop or from mail order and say, what the heck's going on? You put it in the sand, but it's still vulnerable to things that can get in there and cause trouble. Snails, worms, crabs, you name it. Uh, so that's a consideration. Beautiful clam, but uh, there is a price to pay for that huge bissel gate. We've moved now to Tridacna dorasa, which is the second largest of the clams in the family Tridacnidae. It tends to have a greenish mantle, sometimes with a nice blue rim. Uh, not the most colorful, but sort of still very colorful and a, a nice clam to look at. You look underneath and look what's going on here. No bissel gape. The clam has bissel threads when it's little, but when it gets to this size or even about half the size, that uh, bissel gape starts closing and the weight of the clam keeps it on the substrate, keeps it on the substrate uh, uh, ballasted by its own weight. And of course, because the bissel gape is, uh, the clam is able to close almost completely, uh, there's much less chance of predation or damage from underneath. So the survival rate of the Durasa in the aquarium is much higher than that of Crocea and Maxima. Now we take a look at Hippopus hippopus, which is not one of the most popular clams in the aquarium trade because it's not as brightly colored. But if you want a clam that's going to live for a long time, this is quite probably the hardiest of the tridacnids in mariculture farms and also in the aquariums. And you look underneath at where the bissel gape should be and what you see is sort of a zipper-like arrangement. See that? It fits together almost perfectly so this clam can really close up and you look along the uh, margins of the shell, it closes up very effectively and uh, the shell is quite thick in relation to the length of the clam and therefore it is a very tough, very hardy clam and one that is far less susceptible to predation uh, than the Durasa and especially to the blue clams, the Crocea and the Maxima. So look at the Bissell Gape and that will tell you a lot about the habit of the clam, whether it lives attached or unattached, will also tell you a lot about its respective susceptibility to predation. Mahalo.